Good evening, my name is Cameron McDonald and welcome to Whiskey Without the Guff episode 10. Tonight we're doing something a little different. If you remember in episode 2 we talked about casks and the effect that casks have on, on the colour of a whiskey, the smell of it and also the taste of it. Now, a whole bunch of people have been experimenting with different casks. Uh, notably the sherry guys. There's quite a few distilleries who, you know, there's even a genre of whiskey, like a sherry uh, finished whiskey, and people will treat them like that. Uh, nobody's done that, I don't think, as much as the Glen Morangi distillery. Before we go any further, I'll show you where that is again. I noticed in one of the earlier episodes I had this map behind the uh, bottles here, so you couldn't actually see what I was pointing at. Anyway, hopefully you can hear. Glen Morangi is up here, and it's a, it's a lovely distillery. I'll put a couple of pictures in um, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, and also in Tain, uh, which is a little turn besides uh, the distillery. I told you about the Royal Hotel, and I told you that they had a great bar inside there. Not their backup bar, their other bar, their main bar. It was just full of whiskey. So if you look at these pictures, the shelves are just full of uh, whiskey. Messrs Lumsden and Company have done an awful lot and for years and years and years in terms of uh, trying different casks and different whiskies and seeing what they can get out of them. If you think about it from a business perspective, uh, if you were a distiller, and you issue a new product. You're always trying to issue new products to stay current. You're always trying to, you know, increase your market share. Well, if uh, if you were a, a fan of Macallan and they create another product, well, you might buy that, but it might mean that you're not buying what you used to buy. Whereas if you try and get new customers, <clears throat> you're increasing your market share without any detriment to your current share. And I think that's what's happening in Glen Morangi. Uh, because these whiskies are not peaty, uh, they're fairly mild, and yet they're f it's illegal to flavour whiskey. You can't put flavour in. But what you can do is if you put it in a cask, by virtue of the fact that that cask was previously used for sherry, say, some of that sherry residue is going to seep into the whiskey and, and over time, depending on how long it's in there and how much res residue was it left in there, you're going to get a stronger, almost a doping, you know, you're changing the content. You are allowed to do that, and I think Glen Morangi have pushed this further than most people. So if you were new to whiskey, or if you were young, like if you look at young people, they drink a lot of sort of strange things, but they like something with a flavour. Not necessarily the same as some crusty old creature who's uh, tarry rope and pipe tobacco and stuff like that. So that's what we've got here, at least that, that's the intention, and I wanted to see how it would turn out. So, we'll do that in a minute. But what we've started with here is a Glen Morangi 10. It's a nice clean spirit, and you can probably see this in the, uh, the whiskies here, the difference in colour. But this is, we use this as a calibrator that what's just to tune you into, oh, I'm drinking scotch. So that's a nice clean gram, it's 43%. And then we have Nectar Door. Now Nectar Door is a 12 year old, this is a 10, 12. Uh, the, the alcohol by volume goes up to 46%. And Nectar Door is finished in Sauterne wine casks. Sauterne being a white wine, it's not the most natural thing you would think to put in a, a match with whiskey, but we'll see how it goes. And then we're moving to La Santa. La Santa, you may recall from episode two, is no more, no less than this stuff, the standard 10, taken away, stuck in a, a, a sherry cask for two years. And out comes La Santa, so it's darker than the 10, and it's definitely got a different flavor. The last one, and the, but it's the same alcohol, 43. The last one is actually a 14 year old. This is Quinta Ruban. And this guy uh, is finished in port casks. So dark ruby port. So you would expect that this would have a, a much stronger taste. So, in spite of the fact that some of these may be more 
strong than uh, just a straight whiskey, they may be more attractive to younger people because they've got a distinct flavour. And that may be why uh, Glenn Monangie are doing them, I, I don't really know. But certainly I can imagine younger people, or people who don't like scotch per se, finding this an easier step as an introduction. And I guess from a branding point of view, if you become a Glen Monangie fan, then maybe you move up the Glen Monangie uh, food chain as opposed to go and try something else. So, without further ado, let's get going. So, good evening and welcome to Whiskey Without the Guff. My name is Cameron McDonald and this is uh, Colleen and Kim. You know them, you've seen them before. I mean, this is really mostly about personal preference as, a fo as opposed to, uh, oh, I like that, I, you know, this is a good whiskey, that's not. But I'd still like to grade them, so if you think it's just okay. mundane, this one sounds interesting pedestrian. The Sauterne one? Yeah. That one sounds interesting. Well, you, you know, it struck me that this, thanks for bringing that up, it struck me that, that this might be a good place for people that, like younger people, or people who aren't really into whiskey <laughs> while you're a younger person. Uh, because it's, these are almost like flavoured drinks as opposed to like whiskey. They're I not that's PT. that's up my alley. Yeah, they're mild. Uh, and yet, there's a distinct taste from them. Mm -hmm. That said, I, I don't think, you, you know, you're going to rate wildly or that's mundane or, oh, that's excellent. You might because of the taste, because of your personal taste. Mm -hmm. brand. So, okay. let's get going. This one's yours, right? You like La Santa? She does like La Santa. Mm -hmm. Yes, I yeah. do. So, this is the first one. So, this mm -hmm. is the first one. This is just whiskey. Mm hmm. Hmm. Smells nice, but we always use, often use the ten as a calibrator. Did you taste that? I did. You know, I've noticed in the past that you do a lot of one-eyed tasting. Yeah. <laughs> Dasha does. Yeah. <laughs> you do this. <laughs> so well, she and song. I both are, uh, are y your limited experience. And now we're on to our yeah. 12 year, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the one I want to try. Okay. Yeah, I have to wait the, for this. No, different, down different down. smell I, this right is, off the bat. This is the one I have at home that I, oh yeah. Oh, you have this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of hmm. I like that home. smell. Mm. It does smell good. It does smell nice. One. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, it's not it's it's not as rough as, as right. the first one. And um, I've succeeded. I'm trying to get Kim on the whiskey. Yeah. I know. Besides See, that's, my that's enough caution. whiskey to make you think you're drinking whiskey, but it definitely doesn't taste like a straight-on whiskey. No, that tastes. What's the word? Smooth. Mm -hmm. It's smoother. Is it smoother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That tastes smoother to me. I like that one actually. Good. Okay, so the La Santa. Now, La Santa is nothing more than this, but with a further two years, the, the Glen Mangy 10, in a with two years in a cast. sherry cask. Okay. So you would expect it to be sweeter. Sherry's mm -hmm. got a sweet flavor, right? Mm -hmm. But the casting is not overpowering. See, no. Like when you say that, some people might go, oh. No, it's only yeah. in there for two years. Right. Because this is also a 12. I can smell that. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can smell the, mm. smell mm -hmm. the sweetness right mm -hmm. off the bat. Oh, that's really smooth. It is. Much I like La Santa. Mm -hmm. That said, I don't think I could sit there and, you, know, you might think, why would you want to? I don't think I could sit there and woof a lot of those. Because it's, it's too, too sweeter sweet, for too you? Huh. It's not quite a drink with an umbrella in it, but it's... Uh, well, I could probably sit there and wolf a few. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, so, this next one is... Uh, it looks darker. Well, it mm -hmm. should be. Yeah. Um, it's... Because of the cast. Oh, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. This is port, so it's... Port's you know, a nice thing to sit and sip. This, to me, has a nicer fragrance. 
No, that's it's different. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's much different. Now that's more of a it's more of a port kind of. Mhm. Mm that's a two eye cause oh. thing. The port is a sort of stronger drink mm -hmm. than sauterne so. yeah. or. I'd say. Yeah, How many drops did you put in? I it? think I put in a little bit too much. Yeah. Let it open up. It's good though. I, I, this one I need a drop or two. I think or two. Okay. I like that. I like all of them. I. Mm -hmm. They do a nice job. This distillery. Very mm -hmm. nice job. It's all very drinkable. I don't like all of them, but I. I like most of them. No, two two drops is not enough. <laughs> I'll put more in a try. I like that one. That one being the Sauterne? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but then I like more... Well, it's not sweet sweet by any means, but I like more. No. So... In terms of ordinary, good, very good, excellent, where would you rate these guys? Any of them seem excellent to you? Or any of them seem... Well, my personal preference. That one's one for me. Then I like this one. Mm -hmm. Then probably that one and then this one. So one, two, no, two, three, one, four. What about you, Colleen? I am a three, four, two, one. That's probably four drops of water. That's a lot of water. Mm. Well, I don't know what's equivalent to one, one large cube or stone, as you say. How much water is equivalent to that? Well, cube well none, because it doesn't melt. I know. Well, as I recall, I was, for the in temperature. Scotland, I was allowed one cube, one large That's cube, a lot more water. One large ice cube. That's a lot more than four drops. Well, yeah, when it melts down, it probably yeah. But the stones she's talking about, yeah. they don't melt. No. They're just but if chilled. You're, but if used. you can have an ice, yeah, they just chill it. But if you can have an ice cube. Any of them Any of them excellent? Any of them In my... just ordinary? Oh, no, they're more than ordinary. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, do I no, say no, it's excellent? No. Okay. Would you rate it as good or very good? Good. Would you rate any of them beyond good? Yes, I would. And it's three and four. Three and four you would rate what? Very good? Very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not drinking cheap scotch here. <laughs> it's not very expensive. Well, I thought this was about a hundred and a little over a hundred. No. Oh, it is. No, none of them over a hundred. The, the ten is about forty dollars. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of them, 50, 55, yep. 60. I think the uh, the Sauterne version is 75 or something. I don't know. It's something not okay. Mine's more expensive? Mm -hmm. oh. They're fine taste. I do. But I, are these, I thought the three and four were more. Mm, don't think so. Because you have the sherry and the port cast. Oh, well. I'd have to look in okay. my book. I'll look in my book. Well, that's all right. And tell you. Hmm. The 10 year old is $40. The Nectar Door is $70. Mm -hmm. oh, the La Santa is $55. And oh, the Quinta Ruban oh. is $53. Good evening again. Uh, here we have Stu and Steve, who you've seen a few times before, tasting exactly the same thing as the ladies. So, without further ado, numero uno. What's the taste? Let's taste. <laughs> Let's drink. <laughs> so that just tunes you into oh, drinking whiskey. Yeah. Indeed. Then the next one, mm -hmm. of which I have none left, is the Nectar Door. That's the Sauterne finish. Sauterne. It smells a bit like white wine, actually. It's 
Yeah. It doesn't smell like a tin to me. I know it's a smell of something, but not a fan. No? No. Ditto. Okay, next one is uh which one was that? That was the Nectar Nectar door. door. That was Nectar. the Tim. This one there was the Sherry. This is La Santa. You can smell the sherry, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a familiar one. Yeah, the La Santa and then finally the Kintaruban. Uh, you can distinctly smell something off them. Like oh, the yeah. sherry here. Yeah. And then the, the case port. of the Kintaruban. The port. And port, to me, is a natural thing to mix oh, with yeah. whiskey because yeah. it's, a, it's yeah. like an old sit there and have a sip of this and a cigar or something. Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. a cigar. Nice smell off that. Yeah, it does. It's, it's better, even better than the La Sante. Hmm. Wow. So how would you rate them in terms of Ordinary, good, very good, excellent. Any ordinaries or excellence? Uh, I, would, I would call this pretty ordinary. Yeah. I would say... Uh, I would say one and two were pretty ordinary. So the ten you'd rate as ordinary? No, I like the... No, I like yeah, it, but... Yeah. Herbert... Uh, Excellence. Any excellence? This is this is pretty good. The Quinto La Brown. Very good or excellent? Hmm. I don't know. Excellent compared to certainly the best of the four for me. I don't know. If, I'll give if it a VG. It, yeah, I don't know if it would be excellent if, in the whole universe of Scotch. Mm hmm. I would say this has the best nose or smell. Over the mm -hmm. this one. So, what would your but favorite? Would, say, would your both of your favorites be the Quinta Ruban? Uh, this group, yeah, I would say so. Steve, um, I don't know. I I would say the yeah, barely. Barely over what yeah. the La Santa? Yeah, I would say zero, one, two, three. And in your case, Steve, Kinterban? Number one, the best. Okay. Two. Two is La Santa. Three. Four. Okay. Any other things you'd like to add? Any of this? Uh, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of what I think of as sort of flavored whiskeys, and um, I'm not sure that I would run out of the way to buy one. But. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Well, to summarize this, uh, I guess you could do this fairly simply. Uh, we had a small sample size, obviously, like two women, two men, and me. <laughs> so, uh, the men preferred the port finish. Uh, Colleen preferred the port finish too. Kim, though, who's the newest whiskey drinker, really liked the Sauterne. And, and that's quite unusual because Kim, I mean, she actually said, Oh, I like that or something. What's the effect? That's very unusual. Even with the uh, uh three wood, which she likes, she came to that with comments like, hmm, no, yeah, that's not too bad, or oh, I could drink that, or with some water, it's, it's okay. So uh, I think, as much as I could, my, my theory about people might like it, and I noticed that Steve and Stu both said, well, you know, I really like straight whiskey. <laughs> What's the effect? And I said before they mentioned it that I don't know that I could go and 
and drink lots of this. So I would urge you from a, a homework point of view, I think this is a worthwhile exercise, especially if you're new to whiskey, to not so much try the Glen Menangie 10, but, but try these three. And they're not hideously expensive. It's weird because the 14 year old, where you're using up most of the, the infrastructure and the resources, is less expensive than the 12 year old, the, the Nectar Door. Uh, I, I don't know why that would be. But uh, I think it's a very interesting exercise for you and I think you'll, you'll like it. So, uh, as before, get out and drink uh, from a uh, next, next episode point of view. We're going to go to 15 year olds. If you, if you think about 15 year old whiskey, uh, you've tied up the infrastructure of the distillery for not 10 years, not 5 years, but 15. So instinctively, 15-year-old whiskies should be no worse than good. Uh, you would think very good. And I think from a curve point of view, 15 is about the right uh, uh, age for a whiskey. So we'll see how that goes. Meantime, uh, thank you very much. Please hit the like, please hit the subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.